Lucid makes some of the longest range and fastest charging electric vehicles on the market today. I've DC Fast Charge tested both the Lucid Air Grand Touring and also the Lucid Air Dream Edition range, both of which were able to add back 200 miles of real world driving range in only 12 minutes. And that's what Lucid claims that they can do. So they actually nailed it right on the head in my testing. Now Lucid also sells an entry level Lucid Air. It's called the Lucid Air Pure. It's got a smaller battery, less range, and it does charge slower than its more expensive siblings. So I had one on loan recently for range and charge testing. I already posted my 70 mile an hour highway range test for the Lucid Air Pure. I'll drop a link in the description of the video here. But today we're gonna to talk about its DC fast charging capabilities because I charged it quite a few times while I had it. And one of the times I recorded a zero to 100% DC fast charging session on a 350 kilowatt EVgo DC fast charger. And I'm going to do our deep dive DC fast charging analysis here today. So let's get into it. Okay, so we all know that the Lucid Air Grand Touring goes really far. It's the longest range electric vehicle you could buy today. And it's one of the fastest charging electric vehicles that you can get. I haven't ever recorded any electric vehicle that can add back 200 miles of driving range in less than 12 minutes. So as far as my testing goes, it's the king of adding 200 miles of driving range. And I know the new Porsche Taycan can charge really well. I'll be getting one of those in a couple of weeks. So it's possible that the Taycan could dethrone the Lucid Air Grand Touring, but we'll know uh, maybe in a month from now. But today we're talking about the entry level Lucid Air, the Lucid Air Pure. It's got a smaller battery. It's only 84 kilowatt hour compared to the Lucid Air Grand Tourings. I think it's 119. So it's about 35 kilowatt hour smaller. It has a lower top DC fast charging rate, it peaks at only, I think, a little bit over 200 kilowatt, uh, whereas the uh, Grand Touring peaks at a little over 300 kilowatt. But that peak charging power really is, that's for the press notes and for people to get all excited over. We all know, well, people that study DC fast charging know that it's all in the curve, not the peak amount of power. So with a lower peak amount of power, the Lucid Air Pure could still be a very good DC fast charging electric vehicle if the curve is relatively straight. We're gonna find that out now as we do our deep dive analysis. So why don't we just jump right into that zero to 100% recording. And after that, we'll uh, look at all the charts and graphs that I always provide our full charging curve, the time to charge. We'll talk about how many miles per minute are added and all that good stuff. So. Uh, Let's hop into the recording now and see just how well the Lucid Air Pure charges. As soon as I plugged in, the air was pulling over 200 kilowatts. The highest draw I saw was 218 kilowatt, and the Pure pulls over 200 kilowatt for the first six minutes of this charging session. But when the stated charge was at 22%, the charge rate started dropping below 200 kilowatts. The charging power then continued to gradually lower for the next four minutes until it dropped down a little under 120 kilowatt at the 33% state of charge point. But then it climbed back up to around 120 kilowatts and held that for about 10 minutes until it's at 53% state of charge, at which time the charging rate again begins to ramp down. And by the time we're at 60% state of charge, we're now drawing about 100 kilowatt and holds that up to the 75% state of charge point, which happens after exactly one half an hour of charging. Now, the Air Pure definitely isn't top in class, but we have added 69 kilowatt hour in 30 minutes. And for a vehicle with an 84 kilowatt hour battery pack, that's a 1.64 C rate from zero all the way up to 75% which is very respectable and much better than most EVs available today. It took three more minutes to go from 75% to 80%, so a completely flat battery to 80% in 33 minutes. Again, not top of class, but certainly it's in the top 10% or so. The Air Pure then takes 13 minutes to go from 80% 
to 90%. Not great, but not nearly as bad as some of the EVs that I've charge tested here. But the thing is, from 90% on, it's a disaster. It took me 45 minutes to charge from 0 to 90%, and now it's going to take longer than 45 minutes to charge from 90% to 100%. You heard that right. That last 10% takes longer than the first 90% charging took. The charging session ended after 97 minutes of charging. So that final 10% took 52 minutes. More proof that you really don't want to be sitting at a DC fast charger once your battery is above 80 or 85%. It's just not worth your time. Now you may have noticed the station said that the state of charge was 99% when finished, but that's just because there's a lag between the vehicle knowing its state of charge and then reporting it to the station. I checked with the air pure to confirm it was 100% charged when the station shut off, and it was. Okay, so zero to 75% in a half an hour, zero to 80% in 33 minutes, again, not class leading, but uh, pretty good. And I would take that on my EV any day. Uh, but did it live up to what Lucid promises? We're gonna take a look at that now. So I'm gonna bust out uh, all our charts and graphs and we'll analyze this charging session. But first, let's take a look at what Lucid claims the Air Pure can do. So if you go to the Air on Lucid's website, it lists all four variants of the car and how long it takes to add 200 miles of range. The Lucid Grand Touring, the one that I recently range and charge tested, Lucid claims that it'll add 200 miles of range in 12 minutes. And the charge recordings that I did prove that to be correct. I was able to add back 200 miles of driving range in only 12 minutes of charging. Now the Touring, which is in between the Grand Touring and the Pure, can do it in 16 minutes, a little bit longer. And the Pure that we have here today, Lucid says in 17 minutes, you should be able to add back 200 miles of driving range. And we're gonna take a look at that in a minute when we get to the time to charge chart. But for now, let's first jump into the charging curve, which is on the charging power chart. State of charge is powered by Qmerit. After I help you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and have the installation professionals at Qmerit install it. And by following the link, Qmer will waive the $200 on-site inspection fee. But in order to have that fee waived, you have to follow the link in the description of my videos. Okay, so the air immediately pulled over 200 kilowatts as soon as the session started. It bounced right around 216 to 218 kilowatts until the 16% state of charge point here. And then we see this linear decline down to 170 kilowatt at the 30% state of charge point. Now it holds that for a brief time, but then drops rapidly down to about 120 kilowatt and holds that for a while here until the vehicle is at 53% state of charge and it then gradually lowers the charge rate to 100 kilowatt. And it holds that all the way up to 75% state of charge. And that's when we see this slow gradual ramp down until the air is at 100% charged. Overall, it's not a terrible charge curve, but there definitely is room for improvement. If Lucid could do something like this and hold 120 kilowatts up to about 50% state of charge before it starts ramping down, we'd get all these juicy kilowatt hour in here, and they'd probably be able to charge from zero to 80% in somewhere around 22 to 25 minutes. And that would be exceptional. Next up, we're gonna take a quick look at a new chart that I'm introducing, and this is the range replenishing rate chart, which shows you how many miles of range are added for every minute you're charging. Okay, take a look at the x-axis on the bottom. That's the state of charge, and on the y-axis, we have the range replenishing rate, which is miles per minute, and I also have a dotted line along the bottom, which says slow, three miles per minute. Now anything under that, you're charging less than three miles per minute, which I consider extremely slow. Now take a look at the beginning of the charging session. We're up over 15 miles per minute added, actually up over 17 miles per minute added for the first few minutes of charging. 
till we're up at uh, around 16% state of charge. That's exceptional. Anything over 10 miles per minute added is actually exceptional. And we stay greater than 10 miles of range added for every minute charging up until about the 33% state of charge point. And that's when it kind of levels off at right about 10 miles per minute, which is still excellent. So really, we stay at 10 miles per minute or better all the way up to around 53% state of charge. And then from that point up to 75% state of charge, we're still at about eight miles per minute or better, which is still pretty good. So the fact that the air pure charges relatively well, it's not an exceptionally great charging electric vehicle, but because it has such great range, when you add the two together, it turns out that it's actually a very good DC fast charging electric vehicle because what really is most important with charging is how long do you have to charge to get a certain amount of miles to get you to your destination. It really doesn't matter how many kilowatt hour you add and what the peak charging rate is. What really matters is how long do you have to stay there to get a certain amount of distance added to your electric vehicle if you're on a road trip. Next up, let's take a look at the time to charge chart where on the X axis, you'll see the charge time in minutes and on the Y axis, I have the state of charge. Now what you want to see on this chart is the line to be more vertical rather than horizontal because that means it's adding more miles per minute of charging. As you can see that first 10 minutes of charging, the line goes up very sharply before it starts to taper off. And at the end of the charging session, the line's extremely horizontal, which means we're charging very slowly. Okay, so let's take a deeper dive now into the range replenishing rate of the Lucid Air Pure. I added these three lines here that represent 15 miles per minute, 10 miles per minute, and 5 miles per minute. So you could see just how vertical this line would have to be to maintain a certain amount of range replenishment. Okay, so you could say I have this charging session here broken up into 10 minute blocks. Then I have two columns, one that represents the EPA combined range rating of 420 miles. That's what the 2025 Lucid Air Pure's combined rating is. And also the results of my 70 mile an hour highway range test, which finished up with 365 miles. Now I'm gonna read out the numbers in the EPA rated range column. You could see what the other numbers are, which are gonna be a little bit less because I didn't quite attain that EPA range rating when I drove the vehicle at 70 miles an hour consistently on the highway. But as you could see here, the first 10 minutes of charging from zero to 10 minutes, we averaged 14.1 miles of range added for every minute of charging. From 10 to 20 minutes, 9.1, still absolutely excellent. From the 20 minute point to the 30 minute point, 7.8 miles of range added. Now here's where it gets interesting. From 30 minutes to 40 minutes of charging, drop down to 4.8. That's still not bad. It's still close to five miles for every minute of charging. But the reason why I'm pointing this one out is if you remember, we hit 80% state of charge after 33 minutes of charging. So here's where we're now above 80% state of charge. And as I talk about this in my videos quite frequently, I explain why people shouldn't stay at a DC fast charger beyond 80% because the charging slows up so much. Well, how much? Well, okay, let's look now. Now we're above 80%. From the 40 minute point to 50 minutes, only 2.2 miles of range added for every minute you're sitting there charging. From 50 minutes to 60 minutes, 1.3. For the rest of the charging session, from 60 minutes all the way up to 90 minutes when we stopped, we're getting less than one mile of range added for every minute you're sitting there. It's just not worth your time to sit there and wait unless you absolutely need that extra range to get to your destination or to the next charger along the route that you're on. And next up, let's take a look at how long it takes to add a certain amount of miles. This is particularly important on a long road trip. We have again, both the EPA range rating, which is above that charging curve, and my 70 mile an hour highway range test results, which is below the curve. Now you can see here, to add 50 miles, it only took 3.2 minutes if you follow the EPA range rating. It took a little bit longer, 3.6 minutes if you wanna use my range test as your measurement. To add 100 miles, 6.4 minutes according to the EPA range rating, only seven and a half minutes if you're gonna use my range test, so that's still pretty good. 
150 miles came in 10.8 minutes with the EPA and 13.3 minutes with my range test. 200 miles was only 16.2 minutes with the EPA range rating and it took 19.5 minutes according to my highway range test. Now, if you recall early on, I mentioned that Lucid claims that the Lucid Air Pure can replenish 200 miles in 17 minutes. Well, according to this charging test here, if you're going to go by the EPA range rating, which is what they used, yes, it does. It actually did it in a little bit better than that. So Lucid did not tell any fibs here. You can add 200 miles of EPA rated range in 17 minutes with the Lucid Air Pure. Okay, 250 miles comes in just under 22 minutes, according to EPA, and 26.7 minutes, according to my range test. You get 300 miles in under a half an hour. That's actually excellent. That's EPA, of course, 28.4 minutes. If you want to follow my range test, 35.6 minutes. 350 miles comes in 36.6 minutes with EPA, and it took a little over an hour, according to my range test. And 400 miles took the full 63.3 minutes according to EPA. And according to my 70 mile an hour highway range test, the air pure cannot go 400 miles. So there's no number in that column. And finally, we're gonna take a look at my master charging chart for the Lucid Air Pure. Every bit of information that you could possibly want from this charging session is here. As you can see, it's broken down into 10% state of charge blocks. On the X axis, it's the starting point, and the Y axis is the finishing point. So you could look at from 10% to 50%, that box you could look at from 0% uh, down to 80%, that box, you could pick a starting point and ending point, and you get a whole bunch of information, including the amount of time it took for that portion of the charging session, what state of charge was added in that section, how many EPA rated miles of range was added, the average power for that section of the charging session, and also how much energy was added in that section. Now you notice there's different colors for the boxes, and that's because they're identified by the percentage of the full maximum power that the vehicle can take in. If it's this light green color, in those boxes, the air was charging between 80 and 100% of its maximum DC fast charge rate. If it's in the darker green color, 60 to 79%. The beige boxes represent 40 to 59% of the maximum. The orange boxes are 20 to 39%. And the red boxes, the slowest, is zero to 19% of the maximum DC fast charge rate. Now I'm not gonna go over all of the boxes here, but let's take a look at the 10 to 80% and 20 to 80% boxes that I have outlined here with these black dotted lines. So for 10 to 80% of this charging session, it took 31 minutes. The average charging power was 125 kilowatts. We added 70% of the battery and the charging station dispensed 59 kilowatt hour of electricity. We added 294 miles according to the EPA range rating. And for the 20 to 80% charge session, it took 28 minutes. The average charging power was 117 kilowatts. We added 60% of the battery. The charging station dispensed 50 kilowatt hour of electricity, and we added 252 miles of EPA rated range. As you can see, this chart here can be very useful for people on road trips. So you can really take a look at where your starting state of charge is, where your ending state of charge is gonna be. You'll know how long it's gonna take you, how much power you're gonna pump in, so you can even figure out how much it's gonna cost you. This chart's gonna be downloadable from my new website called evchargingstations.com. I don't have it all set up quite yet, but very soon you'll be able to download all these graphs and print them out, throw them in your glove box so you have them when you're on a road trip. All right, so I'm sure you've heard enough of me go on and on about the air pure charging characteristics, but that's what we do here. We try to analyze things to death. You can download these charts that I had here if you're interested on my website. And listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.